In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen here from the paper one of the Ordinary Level Leaving Cert 2004. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, there should be a link to the playlist in the description below. Now, I'll be doing this on a whiteboard, hopefully just like you're used to your teacher doing in the classroom. But remember, this isn't the classroom, you're on YouTube, so take advantage of those tools pause the video, rewind, fast forward, or slow it down if I'm talking too fast. If you find this video useful or any of my other videos, I would appreciate a like or a subscribe. And what helps out the channel the most is sharing it with someone else who could be doing the Leaving Cert. In question six, they give us a graph that I've copied slightly here. It's not very accurate. And it's of a function between x um, is zero and five. And it looks something like this. And they ask you a couple of questions using the graph to get information. So the first question, they ask you to estimate the value of kx when x is 2.5. So kx when x equals 2.5. What they're really asking there is k 2.5. When x is equal to 2.5, what is k? So simply to do that, let's uh, fill in some more numbers here. Uh, we go to the point 2.5. When x is 2.5, this is the x-axis. We go to x 2.5. We use the lines they give us on the page. We line it up and we get our answer. I won't, I won't do much more there because uh, my, my drawing won't be the best. Um, but looking at the, their drawing, I get roughly a guess of 5.9. Now, it's okay if your guess is slightly different. The examiner just wants you to be uh, roughly correct. Someone could look at that and say, oh, it's 6.1 or it's 5.9 or it's some numbers around there. So don't worry too much about being exact. It's just, they really do want to see these lines though. So make sure get a pencil, dot some lines in, show your work. Okay, for part two, they want to estimate the range of values for X for which KX is less than seven kx um, is less than or equal to 7. So how do we do that? Um, well, the first thing I would do is find out when is kx equal to 7, or roughly. I go to 7, come across here, and get a guess at an answer. Um, my guess is kx is equal to 7 when x equals, um, sorry, 1.8, so my drawing. Forget about my drawing, <laughs> 1.8 is what I said when I looked at the, the real drawing. Okay, but they wanted kx less than seven. So when is this line less than seven? It's 12, it's 11, it's 10, it's so on. It's seven around here, it's less than seven everywhere over here. So everywhere past this point, it's um, less than seven. So when x is greater than or equal to whatever your guess was, 1.8. Um, uh, you could also, I think you'd get full marks for that, but you probably should say that um, x is also less than, um, less than or equal to five, because that's the world they give. But you won't lose any marks for that, I don't believe. In part B, they tell us about a student, Liam, who's gonna use a trapezoid rule to estimate the area underneath this curve. Now Liam has uh, did what we did in part A um, and estimated some numbers. At zero, they got 12, at one, they got nine, and so on. All these numbers in the graph. And then uh, they even tell us the answer Liam gets when he uses the trapezoid rule. He gets 32.1. And they ask us just to, to show that, to recreate that basically. So first thing we need is we need the trapezoid rule. So from your, from your book, it's wrote, I'll, I'll write it roughly here. It's the area is estimated by h divided by two, multiplied by, and then it has y1, uh, what, uh, sorry, plus yn, just double check, plus two times all the others, all the others. So uh, y2 plus y3, all the way up to n minus one, all the other numbers. Let me go through what that means. Let's draw this again. We'll draw what image we had in the first half, uh, the first part again. I, oh, I have it down here somewhere. It's uh, something like this. But now we can put in some numbers to it. We know this number is 12. 
We know this number is 9, this number is 6.8, 5.1, 3 uh, 3.8 and 2.8. Sorry, these should all be equal lengths here because the length between them is all 1. It's uh, yeah, 0, 1, 2, 3. The gap between them is all 1. Okay, so using this, this is a normal trapezoid rule. It nearly, it's nearly guaranteed to come up in the exam, I believe. Um, we just need to learn how to use that. So using this formula, we get the area by this. First of all, we identify H. H is one, the gap between us. So it's one over two, multiplied into the first number. The first number is 12. Be careful, the first number is often zero. Uh, when it starts uh, down at the bottom. This doesn't, it starts at the top here. The last number, again, sometimes zero, watch out for that. This time it's 2.8. And then plus two times all the other numbers added together. So we have a nine, we have 6.8, we have a 5.1, and we have a 3.8. Put all that into a calculator, you can do it slowly, you can do it all in one go. Put all that into a calculator and double check we get the answer 32.1, just like they told us we would. Now for the last part, uh, they tell us this isn't correct, this answer uh, we got and Liam got. They tell us the correct answer, I'm just looking for it here, is 31.8, so it's close, 32.1. They want us to find out what the percentage error is. So there's a couple of ways to do this, very quick on your calculator if you know how to do it. I'll do it really slowly here. And um, the way I would always show it is, what's the error, first of all? There's the correct answer. How much, how far away are we? What's the error? It's, uh, we're 0 0.3 away. 0 0.3 is the error. Then I'd try and work out what percentage um, of this is this. Again, very quick on a calculator. Let me do it really slowly. I, I always say something like 31.8 is 100%. What we're looking for is what is 0 0.3? What percentage is that? It's easy to get from one number to another. Just always go through one. How do we get from 31.8 to one? We divide it. We divide it by 31.8. If you divide this by 31.8, you better be fair and do this side. How do we get from one to 0 0.3? Multiply it by 0 0.3. So 0 0.3 multiplied by now this guy, 100 divided by 31.8. So look what I've done there. I've changed this number into one, changed it into this. And then to be fair, I did the same with the percentages. Change this by dividing it by 31.8. Change it down here by multiplying by 0 0.3. So put all that into a calculator and we get 0.94%. That's the percentage error. Uh, by the way, a lot quicker, you could have also just uh, taking this divided by that and you would have got uh, multiplied by 100 then you would have got uh, the same answer okay that's it for question six if you have any follow-on questions put them in the comments below uh, if not have a great day and i'll see you next time